how different uh, how different personalities handle stress mm-hmm. or big emer- emergencies. Uh, yeah. Kind of reminds me of you know one mindset could be similar to that doctor that you that you have at yes. your place, right? Where they fall apart, but you've built up through the years a tolerance, so to speak, of those things, right? So you've seen, in a sense, worse things than what the, yeah. you've dealt with worse. So your your tolerance is much much higher yeah. than probably someone who is just coming into that thing. It's um it's intriguing to see. Okay, these people over here want this urgent thing. These people over here want this urgent thing. These people, and you feel the, and you feel the stretch of it all. And everyone's like, we need this now, we need this now, we need this now. And you're going, well, holy cow, this is quite interesting. How do we pull this off? Yeah. (laughs) And then just that careful art of actually figuring out a way to do it. I don't know how it works, but it does and then you come out the other side like just feeling so proud of yourself because you accomplished this mm-hmm. this thing that's true that idea of standing at a distance and how, how do you usually uh, handle stress I'm just, do you, just trying to see if this guy's doing anymore how do you usually uh do you find yourself being calm? For the most part, yeah. If I start getting stressed about the situation, I just I just talk myself down and like I need to deal with, you know, I need to do this, it needs to get done. Like there's no point getting stressed out over it, just just deal with it, you know. So you're able to sort of redefine it, so to speak? Like look at it in a different yeah. perspective? Yeah. You might have your moments where you just like you want to just cry or you just want to you know there's you're so overwhelmed that you just don't want to do anything because there's just so much going on or so much that yeah. you've done or whatever it is yeah um but you know you don't want to stay in that moment you want to just say okay i have my moment now i just you know this needs to get done like we need to do this we need to deal with whatever the situation is so it's interesting. It's almost like giving yourself permission to to not be freaked out about it. You're giving yeah. yourself permission to go, okay, you know what? You're allowed this amount, moment in time to freak out about this, and then let's just get past it. We gotta yeah. get, get, do the thing. Yeah, it's cool. That's a very hel- that's a really cool, healthy way of being able to transform it. That's that alchemy, transforming that that thing from something seemingly scary or or frightening or like overwhelming yeah. into this like shrinking it in a, a different form wow yeah there's a, there's an overwhelming I think perspective that happens across many many earthlings is that idea of maybe not feeling like they deserve good you know, a good life or good circumstances, or if something good happens for them, something terrible is going to be right around the corner. Yeah. You know, like, oh, that's how it always is. You know, so there's uh-huh. that cynical kind of view. That's how the doctor is that I work with. Is that he'll always like predict, well, thing, you know, we're probably going to do all these walk ins. I'm going to be by myself. I'm going to be super busy. But I'm like, why are you even. And he's like, he's younger than me, too. And I'm like, why are you even like putting that stuff out there before it even happens it's probably not gonna happen you're just stressing yourself out now in this yeah. moment thinking about what could what probably won't happen you know like mm-hmm. why like i don't he's like well because it's just that's just my luck i just don't have good luck I'm like, oh, oh no God. there's just like no talking to him it's in, it's interesting when someone makes that a, a, a bold statement definition identifier towards them uh, particularly one that's that's has negative connotations or a sinking kind of feeling a uh, a wah, wah, wah kind of vibe and it's interesting when when those kinds of ideas seem to be a default mode um, yeah. for many folks because that now becomes this thing that they carry with them throughout their day and they view each situation under that same kind of light and, uh, and of course as a result, they're just inviting more of it in. They're going, yeah. okay, universe, give me more of this. I'm yeah. here. Here's your landing pad. Hey, right over here. Land it right here. Park it right here. <laughs> Drop the bomb right here, right in this spot, right where I'm standing. X marks the spot. Yeah, I don't get it. 
it would be really interesting to interview people. Okay, it would be an experiment of like, without anyone knowing, and this is just a loose way of putting it, an experiment in positive thinking. And not necessarily focusing on the positive, so to speak, that just being a part of it. However, seeing what each person's diet is, what kind of um, media they surround themselves with, um, what their close family and friends are like, you know, like doing yeah. a very sort of like an in-depth thing of finding out what is their nutrition, so to speak. What what are they drawing from? What, what's the, what's the um, population and precipitation of their particular reality experience, of their little paradigm? How do they treat themselves? What words do they usually, you know, come to mind when they th- think of themselves? Um, um, what things do they feel most proud of? What things do they get down about? You know, and looking at those similarities and going, whoa, here's the dialogue that this person has going on in their brain. Oh, and we can relate it to this TV show that they always watch or these kinds of books that they're always yeah. reading or this kind of music they're listening to. Ah, this person has this kind of dialogue. They're always t- telling themselves out loud and telling people, oh, I don't deserve it. You know, nothing good ever happens for me. And then we look at their ha- at their life and we see, yeah, there's a series of terrible stuff that has happened to them. Sure enough, they've invited it into their paradigm. And so it'd be really interesting then to then experiment with them and go, okay, try this trick and we'll just see what happens here. Yeah. We'll just document it and see what happens. And all the words would be words that are like maybe powerful words, uh, music that is um, designed to invoke good vibes. Yeah. Um, um, groups and or people who help encourage their greatness, help them be their best element, help them explore aspects of themselves they never um, had the opportunity to or always wanted to. Let's say someone want, always wanted to learn how to ballroom, uh, not ballroom, but ballroom dance yeah. uh, or swing dance, and then like seeing what that hap- what that does in their life, and now seeing how that alters their their outlook. Uh, what kind of foods are they eating? You know, are they eating a lot of processed foods? Uh, are they, you know, who knows what? And kind of going down that rabbit hole and seeing what that sort of nutritional value is of, of that person. It'd be really interesting, too, because then you could interview the people in their direct uh, uh, paradigm that they most deal with. You know, the names of those yeah. who they wrote down saying, these are my close friends or relatives or co-workers. These, you know, you could say, okay, who's in an authority position in your life? And how do they treat this. How do they treat you? You know? Yeah. And finding out, like, all those specifics. And then finding out from those people how they view that person. Because then it'd be interesting then to see, you know, is this person receiving the bad vibes that they think that they're getting from Mm -hmm. these people? Are the words and language that these people are using, is it intentionally used to try to hurt this person? uh, Hurt their feelings, whatnot. So it'd be really interesting just to see, and then of course, go down the rabbit hole, their friends, their uh, their family specifically. How do their parents talk? You know, how do their relatives talk? Mm -hmm. Um... That would be a really, really cool I'm I'm wondering if you told people like if you gave them a different sort of perspective, a certain a different sort of like view. uh, Like you're not telling them what the program is for, or you're not telling them why you're following them around or why you're doing this documentary. Mm -hmm. The specific reason, but you give them the different reason. Um, so they're more natural, so they give honest answers, so they give authentic, uh, you know, heck, the cameras could just be hidden, which would be the best kind. Yeah. They could just, so that way it just kind of melts into the background, they could just be up in the corners, you know, so it's almost like surveillance cameras, so to speak. Um. Yeah, but it's interesting to see what levels of stress, what people handle, what people don't handle. Um, heck, that could be another program in itself. Just It could be called stress. Just going around finding out from different people, what do they do to cope with stress? How do they view stress? Do they redefine it, kind of like how you do? 
We go, okay, let's just get past this. Let's go to the next thing. I haven't been to that flapper's comedy place yet. Wow. Kevin Nealon. Jason McNeil was just telling me he saw Kevin Nealon at the, I think it was the comedy store, which we gotta go up to sometimes. James, our buddy James, is, uh, I think he's a bartender there. Oh, really? And he keeps wanting us yeah, to I've, I've been go there up there. A couple times. I've seen Helicopter went through here. It got pretty close. I had a premonition it was going to swoop back around. I wanted to capture it the best way I could. Flew off into the sunset or sunset ish adjacent, if it were, if you were, if it were, as it were, if you will. If you will, as it were, as it were, as you were, if you will. If it will, if you were, if it were, as it will, as you will, were, as you were, as you will, as it was, as you were, as you was, <laughs> as it was, you were, as it was, you were, you was it, as it were. You was it, as it were, as it were, as it were, you was it, you, it was you, <laughs> it was you, was it, it was you, was it, uh, as it were, were, that, were, were, as it, as it were, who was that, as it, as it, as it, as it, as, as it, is that, as it is a oh yeah tis a tis a iru tis a tis a riu tis a I'll be speaking backwards before you know it just like Michael Anderson Michael J Anderson I just found out that Michael uh, Allred's middle initial is he would always go by Michael D Allred and then someone asked him, they go, what's the D for? And he said, Dalton. So now we know it's Michael Dalton Allred. And they said, why'd you do that? And he goes, well, pe people kept calling me M, M Dalton. M Dalton. Which sounds like a great author name, right? M Dalton. Here we go. B Dalton, N Dalton. M Dalton. Oh, here, here comes the helicopter. What's it doing? What's it swooping around for? What's it swooping around for, around for? What's it sweeping through the clouds for, clouds for? What does it want, what does it want to see, to see, to see? Does it want to see me, does it want to see me, does it want to see me? Cause I'm just sitting here, out here on my balcony, balcony. He's swooping around. He's swooping around, swooping around, swooping around all through my town. What's he looking for? Will I ever find out? Or will it always remain a mystery to me? Will I ever get to be VIP? Will I be? Ever get called on to be VIP? Here we go.
Is it looking for me? Is it looking for me? Now it's going the other way. It's going the other way. Now it's going the other way. It was going one way, now it's going the other way. Going one way, and now it's going the other way. Flying into the sun, whereas before it was flying away, but now it's flying into the sun. Swooping back around that way. It's doing it today. Hey, 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 hey. I've got kapow stuff to do, don't I? Wanted to tell you about the helicopter. If you're in the helicopter listening to this, then thank you. Thank you very much. This is right. Aqua Dulce. It's got that, that sound yeah. about it. <laughs> it's like, oh, that sounds really far out there. Yeah, it's funny you said Holly Notes. Uh, just yesterday, you know, the radio's on, and, uh, you know, I, I tend to keep it on 94.7 when, uh, you know, like, older people get in the car. And uh, um, Sarah Smile was on, you know, and she kind of singing, you know, the song. You know, and I asked her, I said, did you know that he wrote that song when his wife was leaving him? And she was like, oh, he did? I was like, yeah. I said, she wrote, he wrote that song because his wife was leaving him. Wow. And she actually stayed with him after the song came out. You know, she was so touched by the song, she stayed with him. Oh my God, you know? that's incredible. Yeah, it was, uh, actually, it was uh, uh, Daryl Hall that wrote the song, you know, and and, and and when she was leaving him, you know, uh, she ended up staying because the, the song touched her, you know, and then like a year later, she left anyways, and then that's where that song, She's Gone, came from. Oh my gosh. And then he turned around and wrote, She's Gone. She's Whoa, gone. interesting. That's really cool. Yeah. That's a cool Hall and Oates fact. Gosh, there's so much that I don't even know about a lot of these bands that we cover. Hall and Oates. It's great that a lot of these bands are out there still touring and stuff. Yeah. And, you know, especially now Toto. Um, Africa. Yep. Yeah, thanks to Weezer getting that out there and and kind of highlighting that again. I think it's great because now people are going, "What is this stuff? What's going on here?" And then so it ends up becoming this genre called yacht rock. Yeah. So there's this big, like, for, for instance, at the Hollywood Bowl not too long ago, Michael McDonald and Kenny Loggins and Christopher Cross, these three giants of soft rock, all came together at the Hollywood Bowl to sing together. I thought that was such a cool... You know, Toto did the song Out of Africa and never been to Africa. <laughs> so, you know... People that's like from Africa or, 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 or you know, who've been to Africa, they hear parts of the song and they're like, wait a minute. Right. That don't sound right. <laughs> right you know, I've been right, there. Right. You know, right. so. And, uh, and uh, you know, they, they, you know, he even said, you know, like, like when he wrote the song, he, he's never been to Africa. So, you know, it was just like basically his take on, on, on what he feel it would be like. That's great. You know, so. It's like someone never coming to America and trying to sing a song about it and then connecting things together like, wait, that's not next to Kansas, you know? <laughs> I travel up the PCH in Georgia. <laughs> and people like, wait, hold on a second. There's no PCH in Georgia. <laughs> uh, With Texas on my right. Oh, wait, hold on a second. What are we doing here? Yeah. yeah it'd be so... <laughs> It's, you know, and, and a lot of people got to, they also got to realize there was so much drugs going on back then. <laughs> Even the guys who've been there probably don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> that must have been so funny for Africa, the, the uh, everyone in Africa to hear that song for the first time and wonder, what are these guys talking about? Like, what are they singing about? <laughs> they definitely haven't looked at a map. They're just throwing in exotic names. <laughs> exotic, yeah, just like, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll add this in there. Yeah, yeah. We, 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 we've heard of this before. Yeah, we'll put it right there. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Oh, wow, man. Well, you take care and have a good one, and uh, I'm sure I'll see you again. Bye. Well, there you go. Tidbit about Africa and Hall & Oates. Didn't expect that today. 
note to self, an idea of a contraption called a bean bagel. And it's sort of like a bean bag, but it's filled with bagels instead. Hello? Uh, yeah. Uh, come in. Yes. Uh, I'm calling for Inspirato Projecto. Uh, uh, technical support, please. Uh, uh, I need to know how to access my... Uh, uh, Inspirato, uh, I can't seem to figure it out. Uh, if anyone could get back to me, that would be, um, uh, uh, appreciated. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, We're here with Philly Ocean from, uh, Yachtly Crew. Now, Philly, can you please explain how you Let actually me tell you make your own right now. Let me, data fries? I was just going to tell you. Oh, yes. Yeah, how to make your own incredible sweet potato fries. Oh, yes. Step one. Yes. Step one. Oh, you, oh. So you, you get the, uh, well, you get the potato. You get the sweet potato. Yeah, you get the get sweet potato. Get a couple. Potato. Get maybe three good size sweet potatoes. Purchase Very them. Important. Purchase Very them. Important. Don't steal them. Do not steal them. Purchase them from the store. No matter Walk how much you get the, the urge. the store and find your car in the parking lot. And or take public transit. Nothing against that. And hold your hold your receipt in your hand, too, so it, you prove to yourself that you actually bought it. This yeah. is Baba Booey, and you're in June Lake, and you're listening to Inspirato Projecto. And we're back. <laughs> Dude, that's brilliant. Now we're back. And we're back. Step three, drive your car home. Mm-hmm. Step four, open up your front door. Your yes. Step five, close your front door. Oh, boy. That's the most, that's probably very important. Unless, you know, you want to invite random people in. Now, is it all right if they keep the engine running in the meantime? Oh, yeah, we forgot the most important step. Shut off your car. Mm. <laughs> Put it in park. Then walk to your front door. And we're going to fast forward a couple steps. That's right. I'm boring myself. We're going to fast forward some. You're going to wash off those sweet potatoes. Good, good, very And good. if they're too large, you're going to want to cut them in half. Oh, yeah. You're also going to need to, three days prior to listening to this, order a French fry cutter from Amazon. <laughs> three days prior to listening to this, yeah. If you have Prime. Seven yeah. days if you don't. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. So now yeah. that you have your French fry cutter, yeah, that's, that's right. You're gonna take the that's half a sweet potato. You're gonna put it in the French fry cutter, and it's gonna perfectly cut French fries for you. If you don't, then it's just gonna take longer, but you can do it. And you want to cut a fry? I usually do it it's about like a quarter of an inch by a quarter of an inch, maybe a third of an inch. Do by they a resemble the ones that you're eating? Yes, you, you can see these right now, but not the people listening. Mm. But they're the perfect size. For the people listening, it's about roughly the size of Rob Jones's penis. Yeah. Everybody knows what that is. Everybody knows what that is. Quarter inch by quarter inch. Yeah. They've seen the pics. So then once they're cut, spread them out, single layer on a cookie sheet. Oh, yeah. Drizzle some olive oil over them. Sprinkle a little sea salt and cook them for about a half an hour. You want to turn it about halfway through. Mm. I like my fries crispy. Oh, so yeah. you, I think it's about 425. It's probably a good temperature. And then when they get close to being finished, you just put a little rosemary on top. Oh, wow. Yeah. For an added Straight. finish. And then dip it in your favorite sauce. Now, have you ever uh, sprinkled like uh, peanut butter on it or anything like that? Because no, they are really kind of sweet. Peanut butter on sweet potato fries? What are Some you? tasty. Are you crazy? I'd try, it. I'd try it. I'm crazy. I'd try it. Melted peanut butter on anything. Have you had melted peanut butter on ice cream? It's fucking amazing. God, it's so good. It's not the same as sweet potato fries. I know, but peanut butter makes everything better. I've, so I've come into the apartment after I've cooked up sweet potatoes, and boy, it smells like cookies. It smells so good, so sweet in there. And I'm imagining if you just added that. So are you a peanut butter fan? Oh, I love peanut butter. Oh. I have to keep it out of my house because I'll eat oh, all the Oh, God, I know. I know. I get into trouble all the time. Yep. I eat so many peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. 
Are you a peanut butter jelly sandwich fan? I'm a grape jelly guy, though. Don't bring me that strawberry jelly. Oh, yeah, the grape jelly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah. Not a strawberry jelly fan. Strawberry jelly people are weird to me. I'm like, I I, I, give you side eye if you you have strawberry. Now, is it the chunks of the strawberry that's in the jelly that. I don't like that. I just don't. The strawberry jam is the best. No, no. Oh, God. No, I thought we were friends. My grandma Daniel. Oh, now you're My whole life. <laughs> she chopped down the strawberry She tree. made the best strawberry jam you have ever had. Oh my god. Ever. Oh my god. Well, I've never had a good one, so it wouldn't be that hard. Oh, I don't know how that's possible. So, you, so you've never you, you've never tasted a really good one? I'm a fan of grape jelly. I've already it, talked about this. Well, jelly, I used to jam, only, I don't care what you are. I used to it. only buy them at uh, grocery stores. Yeah, Welch's grape jelly is the best. Grapes, oh yeah, Welch's, yeah. Smuckers, okay. Yeah. I'll work with Smuckers. Now, have you ever tried the double decker? I, oh man, I, I've done this on so many occasions when I eat a peanut butter. Have you uh, done your own experimentations with peanut butter, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches? Uh, I like to, this is a really strange, and I realize I'm going to lose all credibility that I just gained. That's good, that's good. But I like putting salt and vinegar chips on, oh, in the oh, peanut butter and oh, jelly sandwich. Oh, that's good, that's a great weird. idea. It, it oh my God, great. that's Something great. about the salt and vinegar with the peanut butter and jelly, oh, I love it. the crunch. Interesting. Crunch with the with yes. the softness of the peanut butter jelly sandwich. Mm. It is fun to experiment with different kinds of chips yeah. in there. And you know, wow, that's so interesting that you brought that up. It's so interesting. It adds this little extra thing that you're un, this little unexpected right. taste in there. Listen, I love it. I mean, peanut butter and jelly yes. is just oh, we're listening to some yacht rock here at Tiger Bar in June, Mike. Oh yeah. Oh it's yeah. A reminder of where we are. Up oh, yeah. in the mountain. We're at a higher elevation, so if we seem a little loopy, oh, that's you can true. Blame the altitude. That's right. Yeah. If you're listening to this, you're feeling very loopy. It's because the altitude has been directly we're, stamped. We're at about eight thousand feet above sea level right oh, now. Oh my gosh. That's pretty high. So we're taking in more oxygen than we're used to. Yes. Or no, we're less oxygen. Will this affect Wait, our uh, fog machine today? <laughs> I thought it was less. I don't I don't know, but I feel loopy. Will this affect our fog machines in any different way? Will it, it disperse lucky. more or less? I'm going to say it's going to disperse less. Oh, my God. Do you think this will carry on to this beautiful fog among the, 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 the yeah, pine sir. trees? That's right. We're playing out among the oh trees. Oh, my God. This is going to be crazy, yeah, man. We're going to send Yacht Rock vibes out into nature. Misty, we're going to be sending Yacht Rock vibes out into nature. Yeah, I think you might scare the animals, but as long as they stay away from our house, I'm good. But it's all good loving. You know, just imagine. Oh, my God. We could have... We could have we could have a headline in the newspaper, uh, Titans of Soft Rock, Serenade Mother Nature. I mean, I love it. I, I think I'm going to have to write that press release. I, you should be our PR agent. You know I mean, what the hell? I like to use the fr- free press release sites and do it. Oh, uh, there fun. you go. Hey, it's been working. Oh, my yeah. gosh, it's fun. It's fun to do. It's like a, a little fun little... Listen, the bears need Yacht Rock, too, right? It's they do! They do! Oh, my God. If we're... Because we're talking in the language of love. Uh, nature, Mother Nature understands love. It was born with love. And I think when they feel that vibe, like, ooh, we're all love here. Oh, my God. Could you imagine? As long as they're not hungry. Right. Because then right. they might eat you. That's very true. That's but very true. Besides that, they understand love. Besides that, they do understand love. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hunger is, like, probably the top most part of the list. And then yeah. probably love. Yeah. Well, sleeping and then love. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Because even bears like to cuddle. Yeah, bear hug. That's why they call it a bear hug. The bear hug. That's, that's right. That's right. Where else would we get that idea, that idea from? Yeah, you just... Uh, the and bear hug. Fill the ocean back. Fill the ocean is... So anyway, you take the fries out of the oven. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We got this is going to end in a cliffhanger. I just know it. Ladies and gentlemen. Okay, get a cliffhanger. We're up in June Lake in the mountains. Oh. In the mountains, mountains, mountains. Three waters for Phil. That's all I drink anyway. This has been a punchline moment with Rob Jones. Oh, that'd be great if I only record his punchlines. That'd be great. Just a whole podcast of all his punchlines. But no one has any reference oh for the punchline. Yeah, well, you should, you're recording stuff all the time. You probably have about half. I am. I probably do. Probably got an archive. Which is shared among the populace. When a song like Fooled Around and Fell in Love comes on, yeah. everybody in the cabin just starts looking around. They do. They think about that one that they lost. They do, they do. The one that... The fish that got away, so to speak. That's right, you know? And 
it never happens when you think it's gonna happen. It's just you're out minding your own business, having a drink, and then you yeah. get your fucking head knocked off oh, by, yeah. a, by a lady friend, you know. And then she leaves you. Whoops. And you write a song like "Fooled Around and Fell in Love." Elvin Bishop knows the story. Oh he knows God. it oh too well. Bishop in Bishop, we're in Bishop. Well, we were in Bishop earlier. And we're gonna yeah. be giving love to. And to I played Bishop. Elvin Bishop's guitar earlier this week. You did. Yes, a friend of I'm mine so has his. I'm so proud of you for playing 19, this song on his guitar. 1966, Gibson oh, 335. Dude. Uh, can you please put to, that video had, up the, on Twitter? I mean, the, uh, Instagram? I could, I could. Oh, my God, the, it'd be beautiful. The jack had to uh, be repaired. Uh, so there's like a little... A little so the, awesome. So the jack is... And I think they redid the bridge. But other than that, it's all original 1966 parts. And I got to play it. So obviously, I played this song. Ooh. around the Okay, can it. you please send... Uh, email me that video. So what I'll do is I'll extract the audio. And I'll zip... I'll zip it right we'll into the podcast zing, so people zang, can hear zing. like those right. little, we will zing zang zoom it. That's right. We'll do it. The fact that you were able to play that because you know this song I have the Viper Room this live version. I don't know if he recorded the song on, on this guitar, but I'm assuming if it was his guitar, he probably played it at I'll some point. Yes, is that he played oh it on every god. gig, right? He probably played the song on every gig. So if it was his guitar, oh my I'm god, yeah, he played it. Oh yeah, dude. So, oh man, that's just that's just incredible. That's incredible. It's incredible. It's incredible. And then when we meet him in person, you can tell him that you played his guitar. Yeah, if I had a few grand extra lying around, I could buy it and then play it at Yacht Rock Games. That would be yeah. amazing. Yeah. Right? Oh, my God. That's right. Wow. Wouldn't that be funny if you were such a collector you got Peter Beckett's original guitar, Elliot Lurie's original yeah, guitar. You'd be like, hey, guitars. Peter, come on up, play yeah. your original guitar. I, yeah, I happen I to have it. it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's right. Hey, Lurie, here. Here's when you were 16. You I can't have, have it back. We yeah, can play it for one right. time. That's right. I'm reuniting yeah. up on stage. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Great guitar some, solo in this song, by the way. Oh my god, dude. Guitar you do a great job. Favorite. I get so excited every time you play this I solo. I try to play it as close as possible. To Jeez, you do, man. The guy who, I, don't know, I don't know if it's Elvin or whoever played this guitar solo. It's a great, it's a great guitar solo because it's it just like, it's one of those that, it's not super fast or anything. It just has a great emotion. And really, I feel like a good guitar solo can really take the vibe of the song and yeah. put it into musical notes, you know? And that they, he does that great in the song. Man, you, you do a great job of surfing around in it. Sometimes I, it's just I'm laughing with joy back there. Um, oh, well. Because it's just like, oh, it just sounds so, everything's in the pocket. It's That's just so thing. magical. It just, I close my eyes and I just hear these like. Oh God! It's just oh. You see, you see trails. Of I see sound. the trails. I see the trails of the sound. I can't yeah, help amazing. it. <laughs> You're a synesthetic. Very synesthetic. Yeah. Well, you know what's so interesting? I think this is why. So on Reverb Nation, I have that, that one song up there. We are number one. What song? This song? Yeah. Oh really? The, our live version at Viper Room. First oh, time nice. we played it. Uh, the twenty third. Yeah. Um, I have this up, and you can hear the audience going crazy. It's beautiful, and um, I have it up there. And we're we're number one in the number one in the county, and number two in the region. Nice. So we're up there, dude. It's like ah. This I mean, is like it's becoming a great song. And it we is do a great job. Oh, there's so. just so much great stuff infused in it. It's just infused in it. Oh man. Oh man. Oh, just infused in it. It's so good. Yeah. So there you have it, everybody. Inspirato Projecto. You got to do a, the station call every once in a while. You're listening to Inspirato Projecto. Oh yes. Oh yeah. Can you say this? This is, to- this is Tommy Bowie, and you're listening to Inspirato Projecto. We, let's do a, uh, let's do, you're out of LA, so let's do Lobster Rock. Blue Lobster Rock. You ready? There you go. I'm going to go from Kiss to you. I'm going to go from Kiss to the Jangles to you. Ready? Christian, no, water and This is Baba Booey from Yachtly Crew, and we're going to be at Lobster Rock in Redondo Beach on September 23rd, 6 p.m., be there. Don't miss the boat.
Yeah. Phil has it. I got my hands full. Okay, what is the price on that? Hey, this is Connor just calling to let you know that we had uh, published your story as a draft, or we saved it as a draft, so it didn't get published. But we uh, are going to be putting your intro at the beginning of our episode that's coming out tomorrow, so you can listen forward to that. Thanks so much for getting in touch with us again. Uh, feel free to stay in touch. All right, have a good one. I did. I did hear you up there. I well, did. I oh, yeah. Because I was going, cool, 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 cool. Oh, you did, you did. Oh, good. Here we go. Is that Dave and... Hey. Real quick, here's a personal. Oh, that's strange. Here's a personal. Exactly, exactly. I thought it was one of you guys playing with me up there. I figured someone would have caught that because I was going cool, 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 over and over like really loud to see what would happen. Hey, hey, pretty good. Hey, you hoser. Hey, you hoser. Hey, don't forget to feed hoser before we go. Hey. I hope to see you at this weekend storytelling festival because when you tell them how long it is, they're going to laugh at you. I hope to see you at the Tales and Trail Festival because I know your stinky butt is going to be a big hit. That's a personals found in the sheet. Wow. Do you have a lot of bands play up here? Uh, yeah. Usually every wedding there's a band or a DJ or something like that. And they're always outdoor, huh? Yeah, they're always out on the deck. So I don't know where you guys are setting up, but usually out on the deck or inside. It depends on what the bride and groom want, I guess. Man, this is beautiful. Yeah, we got pretty nice views over here at Jim. We get to the top, it's pretty amazing. Do you know this guy getting married, Jamie? Yeah. Does he live around here? Yeah, he just bought some place down the street called T Bar and some place. Oh, it's that guy. Is that Jamie? Do you know that dude? Yeah, I, I kinda know him. Yeah. Yeah. Is he cool? Uh yeah, I don't really talk to him very much, but I mean, it's, Everybody it's in town seems to know him pretty well. Making coffee for us. It's so cool. They uh, said they set up a station right around the corner. Now let's see, what what corner is that? He said he set up a coffee station. Hey, Baba Bui, he said he set up a coffee station right around the corner, but I don't know. Oh, oh, is it in here? Oh, yeah, dude. You found it. You found it. Here it is. Oh, this is great. Beautiful. Coffee station. Welcome to the coffee station. It's what you've been waiting for. Come on now. Welcome to the coffee station. Come on. Oh my God, it smells so good. Well, this is one of the few times I'm going to drink two creams, three sugars. This is how I used to drink it back in the day. My friend Katie Cassis used to call it candy coffee. She's like, Kurt, you're drinking candy coffee. She would drink it black. And then I started watching Twin Peaks and then I started wa drinking it black. Ooh, this is good. Oh, man. This is such a joy right now. This is such a joy. Oh, man. This is great. This is great, man. This is great, 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 man. <laughs>
Say what? What? Are you sure? Thank you. Just let me leave my trash on a counter. That is a mark of a true... Thank you so much for this. Oh my God, this is great. Is it good coffee? I think it is. It smells delicious and tastes delicious. Good. This is from a local uh, farmer? Well, a local, uh, what do you call it, a roaster. A local Bananas. roaster. Oh my Black gosh. velvet coffee. Oh my God. Oh yeah, there. So mm. Oh my God, that is so tasty. Oh yeah, okay. Oh yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Oh God. <laughs> oh. Here, I'll show you. I'll show you. Oh yeah, right through that magic curtain. Thank mm. you. Oh my God, this coffee. Oh my God, this is good. Mm. Dude, I'm gonna be running around in circles, man. Oh, Polly, there's a napkin I just noticed. Oh, shit. Right here, right here. Oh, yeah, get one of those. Nice yeah, get a couple. Shit. Oops. There are these guys. And then you want a top? I noticed these tops. I'm going to give my brother a top for his coffee. Also, I noticed that it's hot around the edges. They also have these. Oh. Isn't that nice, Polly? That's nice. Isn't that nice, Polly? Nice, it's nice to have such things, Polly. It. It's nice to have such things in life. <laughs> oh, you know what? He said to just leave it up here. I know, I do too. I do too. Even with permission. Even with permission, I feel bad. Mmm. Oh, that's good. That's self-contained warmth, tastiness. Nuttiness? Mmm. Oh, yeah. Nuttiness. All the way from Mammoth. All the way from Mammoth. All the way from Mammoth, baby. Have you taken a sip yet, Polly? What does that taste wow, like to you? Oh, nuttiness. More. Uh, good. We are out here with conga percussionist extraordinaire, David Bowie. We're out here on the mountains. Have you ever, have you ever played in the mountains? Uh, not, not this high up. I mean, we did that Denver show. Um, several months back. Oh, that's right. We're at an 8,600 elevation from what we're being told. And, man, well, I'll tell you what, we can feel it. We can all feel it today. Do you feel your throat's dry? Oh. Bum I mean, I think mouth so. is dry, throat's dry. I'm trying to drink a lot of water, stay hydrated. <clears throat> Not going to be a big party for us tonight. So the water is the key in higher elevations? Absolutely. Your body gets sapped from all of the lack of moisture and humidity Ooh, that's in, you know, so dry up here. You don't, you don't realize it because, you know, you see all the snow and the, and the caps Right. And so on, that is quite an interesting uh, sort of paradox, huh? You see all the snow up here, and yet it's dry. It is. Bone dry. <laughs> bone. Bone. <laughs> Bone, bone. Hey, Brian, where's my bottle? Bone dry over here. Bone dry. Stewie. So, <laughs> um, this is your first time ever, aside from Yachtly Crew stuff, playing up in the in the mountains. Oh, absolutely. I don't I don't know that I've ever been much higher than this, except maybe on a plane or something. But did, I'm not. Did I'm you think first that we would? Mammoth, too. Did you think that you would ever be in? Um, a band that actually is serenading so much Mother Nature at once. This is impressive for anybody. Oh I, I, don't, I don't care if you're playing in a band or not, oh but man, God. I mean, just the, the, the luxury of having the opportunities that we're get, being given right now. I mean, this band has blown up in, in droves, more, more so than we ever even thought, right? I mean, we thought mm -hmm. we were just having some fun. It's, it, the, the rains are being taken over by Paul McCartney. Oh, yeah. We'll talk more later, ladies and gentlemen.